Hey guys, welcome to a quick update on my WD mic hot drive. As you can see, there is a solid red light indicating that it doesn't work anymore. The problem is, pretty much all the footage for my next videos is on there and I really want to get it back. I admit, putting all the eggs in one basket is not a clever idea. But we all make mistakes and that's why we meet in this video. One thing that is important to notice is this device is not physically broken. It just stood there and stopped working. And this is why I think we got a good chance at getting the data back. So without further ado, let's check our options. The first thing to do is a soft reset, which you do by pressing the reset button during startup. Hold it for a few seconds and see what happens. You might be lucky and it just had a bad day and will boot up normally. Now for me, this didn't work, but it might save you a ton of time, so definitely try this first. The second option is a factory reset. I've done this before on another drive and it worked great, so I'll give it a try. For the factory reset, you press and hold the reset button for about a minute while the drive is starting up. I'm using a drill here, but any small metal object will work. Don't worry, this will not delete your data. It just resets any passwords and settings you might have changed. If this works, your device will be as good as new and your data will show up. However, in my case, this didn't work and after flashing blue for a bit, the light turns red again. I tried it multiple times, same results every time, and it also remains inaccessible through the web interface. At this point I would say the device is broken and we need to dive in deeper. One critical point here is to understand that the data is still on there. It is just the software structure around it that for some reason stopped working. But here's where it gets tricky. The NAS drive is based on Linux and has encapsulated the data in a Linux-based storage format. This means if you have a Mac or Windows PC like I do, you simply cannot read it. The drive needs to be translated in order to access the data. I found several ways of doing this and I'm going to show you the different options and you can figure out what works best for you. The easiest and quickest option is to buy software which is specifically made for the purpose of recovering data from hard drives. Choose this option if you simply want your stuff back and not deal with any other technical stuff. And with buy software, I really mean buy it, because if it doesn't work, you might be eligible for a refund and you definitely don't want to risk losing your data by using some shady crack programs. In order to get Linux onto your Mac or Windows PC, you can use a virtual machine. A virtual machine emulates another operating system on your computer for as long as you choose to run it. The good thing is that this new machine runs within a window that you can move around and close at any time so you never really lose the familiar feeling of your computer. Also, you don't need a restart to run a different operating system. You just start up a new VM and it feels like just another program that you open. To create a VM, you need to use some software like Parallels or VirtualBox. I've put the links in the description. While Parallels is super easy to use, it costs money and only runs on Mac. VirtualBox, on the other hand, runs on Mac, Windows and Linux and is completely free, so I would recommend using this if you want to try this method. However, it is slightly more difficult to use, but there are great tutorials to guide you through it. It would be beyond the scope of this video to explain virtual machines in detail, so I'll go over to the next option, which is get your own copy of Linux. The third option is to download and boot a Linux operating system on your computer. Again, there are different ways of doing this, but I'll focus on the easiest one, which is to create a bootable USB stick with Linux on it. Like this, you can choose to run Linux temporary and then switch back to your normal operating system once you finish transferring the files. By using this method, we can get the data back without installing anything new on a deeper level of your computer, which might be intimidating or just unnecessary. The first step is choosing a particular version of Linux that you want to install. There are many different options, but I'm going with Linux Mint here, simply because I have seen and used it before. The other distributions should work just as fine, and technically even a Raspberry Pi with Raspbian installed, but I'm going to cover that later. First of all, you're going to linuxmint.com and click on download. You can use any of the listed sources for downloading. Officially, you're supposed to validate the Linux distribution through a hash code, but I will skip this step here and just trust the source. I know, not so secure but I don't want to make it more complicated. After a few minutes, you got your ISO file and we can proceed to the next step, which means we transfer this onto a USB stick. Now, unfortunately, we can't just drag and drop it, but instead we need to do a process called flashing. I know it sounds weird, 
but in this case it really just means to burn the image onto the drive and make it bootable. To do that, head over to berliner.io and download the program called Etcher. The cool thing is you'll find Etcher for both Windows and Mac, so whichever system you use, it'll work. Once you installed Etcher, open the program and select Flash from File. Select the ISO file that you just downloaded from linuxmint.com. After that, you select the drive you want to flash it onto. This USB drive needs to be empty and freshly formatted. You can see here that the system's hard drives are also showing up, but you want to select the USB drive, obviously. And then you hit flash. It'll take a while for the process to finish, and you'll notice that once it's done, your system will send you an alert that it cannot read the USB drive because it's not a storage volume anymore. This means that your USB drive is ready to boot so you can plug it into your laptop or computer and fire it up. While booting you usually have to press a special key in order to get to a menu where you can select the boot source. With Mac this is the Alt or Option key. Once the boot menu opens up you select the USB drive as a boot source. Your computer will now ask you if you really want to boot Linux and you hit enter to confirm and then it'll take a while to boot up the system. We now finally have a running version of Linux Mint on our computer and now it's time to actually connect the hard drive. Without further ado, let's dig in. We're almost there, so let's finally connect the hard drive. I plug in the USB cable and switch on the SATA adapter and the drive powers up. Now after a few stressful seconds, it finally shows up, but to my surprise, it seems to have 5 partitions with only 1 or 2 gigabytes each. 
Luckily, in the file system I can locate the big partitions with 2 terabytes. Let's take a look. Now here you can see there's actually some of my files in there and I'm super happy and very relieved that I can access and view them. So these are some clips from an older project where I restored an old car trailer and actually converted it into a bicycle trailer to go onto raves in the forest, which was quite fun, so good times. But more importantly, my big photo with already structured footage is on there, which is essential for my next project. So this video turned out to be more complicated than I thought, but if it helps at least one more person to recover their data, it will have been worth making. I hope it was easy to follow along and that you found some value in it. If so, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel, as there will be more tech related stuff coming out soon in the future. For the next step, check out my video about formatting drives, or if you've already done that, see how you can further use it by installing it into a new case. That's all I got for today, so stay safe and until next time. Bye!